Okay. Oh, yeah, tweet the link. It's, it's like hot, like I'm sweating. It's so hot in here, man. So, yeah, it's fine. The AC is starting to come on. Do my Twitter link work? Got number 45. Open. What's up, Liz Bacon? Take your shirt off. My shirt was off, and you just told me to put one on. Um, you don't have to do this. That's fine. I feel like I'm fucking sweating. Are you guys ready for chapter two? Oh, the Fault in Our Stars by John Dewey. A lot of people are asking if you're okay. I am fine. Just really sweaty. I haven't even ran to the bathroom in a while. And I haven't thrown up in like since since I threw up the by the elevator. All right. All right. Are you guys ready for chapter two? Or not? Look! Look at this! Look at this! I got. Oh my gosh! Bay or not? Or not? Bitch what? <laughs> Bitch what? Uh, love me though. Or not? Yeah, let me go. A. It's actually pretty tight. Yeah. Yeah, we call you West one. Chicken <laughs> and a llama. I'm guessing Miley. I like Kanye. That's a pretty yeah, good one. Yeah, it's all right, guys, are you ready to start the book club? I want to make sure everyone's here. And if this is your first time here, I am, this is like my book club because I need to get better. Well, I need to read more books and I need to get better at pronouncing things and like up my vocab. So we are reading The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. Yes, I am probably sweating because it's hot in there and I'm sick. So, chapter dose. Do you remember what happened in chapter one? Bits and parts. She met, or she's going to Augustus's house. She made that decision. Okay. So are you guys ready? To start. Bitch, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's hot. All right, ready, guys? All right, is everyone on chapter two? Right here. Okay. That's weird. I can see what I'm showing. It's stalling. Oh, crap. Uh -oh. Alright, everyone, go grab your book. The thing is skipping. Would you like me to fan you? No. Okay. You feed me grapes. <laughs> I'm not allowed to eat grapes. I haven't ate anything. All I've I've been drinking this all day. And I'm almost done. Dang it! It's freezing. All right, hold on, guys. I'm ready, even though I read ahead. Okay. Thank you for. Saying feel better. This is Yosh. He lives with me. He like watches over us and stuff like that. Um, he's basically he's gonna help me correct certain words or like pronounce certain words that I don't know how to pronounce. And you should have got your own book. I don't know. This next week I will get my own book. Happy birthday, 
Is that Anna? Okay. Are you guys ready? Oh, tweet it, tweet out hashtag uh, Camp Book Club too, just in case like other people don't. Just probably, I'll go retweet you guys. I'm gonna retweet a couple people, and I'll follow you if I don't follow you. So tweet hashtag Camp Book Club, just in case like anyone didn't see it or something like that. That I'm starting. Okay, can I, um, get your books ready to chapter two. Thank you, Bianca. Okay. All right, you guys ready? Okay. Uh, yes, I'm feeling okay. I felt horrible earlier, but let's start reading. Is the, is the connection better now, guys? Say yes or no. Is the connection better? No. Yes, 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 yes. All right, I'm going to start. Ready, guys? I'm taking a shower today. All right, ready? Augustus Waters drove horrifically, horrifically. Whether stopping or starting, everything happened with a tremendous jolt. I flew against the seatbelt of his Toyota SUV each time he braked, and my neck snapped backward each time he hit the gas. I might have been nervous. What? I might have been nervous. What with sitting in the car of a strange boy on the way to his house. Keenly aware. Is that right? Keenly. Oh, keenly. Keenly aware that my craft lungs complicate efforts to fend off unwanted advances, but his driving was so astonishingly poor that I could think of nothing else. We'd gone perhaps a mile in jagged silence before Augustus said, I failed the driving test three times. <laughs> you don't say. He laughed, nodding. Well, I can't feel pressure in old... Prosty? How do you say that? Yeah. Maybe. Well, I can't feel pressure in old Prosty, and I can't get the hang of driving left-footed. Uh, so oh, prosthetic she... leg, or something. Like oh, prosty, prosthetic leg. I get it. Um, you sweat. <laughs> okay, dude, it's freaking hot in here. So hot. Do you know that on my first road test, I hit a dog, and I failed. <laughs> I swear. I passed one. I got like fourteen wrong, and you only lap fifteen. Right? Pass is pass. Not bad. Uh, where was I? My doctors say most amputees can drive with no problem, but yeah, not me. Anyway, I go in for my fourth driving test, and it goes about like this is going. A half, a half mile in front of us, a light turned red. Augustus slammed on the brakes, tossing me into the triangle, triangular embra embrace of the seatbelt. Sorry. I swear to God, I'm trying to be gentle, right? So anyway, at the end of the test, I totally thought I'd fail again. But the instructor was like, your driving is unpleasant, but it isn't technically unsafe. I'm not sure I agree, I said. I suspect cancer perk. Cancer perks are the little things cancer kids get that regular kids don't. Basketballs signed by sports heroes, free passes on late homework, unearned driver's license, etc. Yeah, he said. The light turned green. I braced myself. Augustus slammed the gas. You know they've got hand controls for people who can't use their legs, I pointed out. Yeah, he said. Maybe someday he sighed. Maybe someday. He sighed in a way that made me wonder whether he was confident about the existence of someday. I knew osteosarcoma, osteosar osteosarcoma was highly curable, but still. There are a number of ways to establish someone's approximate survival expectations without actually asking. I use a classic, so are you in school? Generally, your parents pull you out of school at some point. They expect you to bite it. Yeah, he said. I'm at North Central, a year behind, though. I'm a sophomore. You? I considered lying. No one likes a corpse, after all. But in the end, I told the truth. No, my parents withdrew me three years ago. Three years, he asked, astonished. 
I told Augustus a broad outline of my miracle diagnosed with stage five or stage four. Yeah, stage four. Yeah, stage four. stage four thyroid cancer when I was thirteen. I didn't tell him that the diagnosis came three months after I got my first period. Like, congratulations, you're a woman. Now die. <laughs> it's hot, like I'm sweating. I'm gonna close the door. Maybe that will help. All right. Um. Um, it was, it was, we were told incurable. I had a surgery called radical neck dissection, which is about as pleasant as it sounds. The radi then radiation. Then they tried some chemo for my lung tumors. The tumors shrank, then grew. By then I was 14. My lungs started to fill up with water. I was looking pretty dead. My hands and feet ballooned. My skin cracked. My lips were perpetually. Mm -hmm. My lips were perpetually blue. They've got this drug that makes you not feel so completely terrified about the fact that you can't breathe. And I had a lot of it flowing into me through a P-I-C-C -C line. Pick line, whatever. P-I-C-C. Um, and more than a dozen other drugs besides. But even so, there's a certain unpleasantness to drowning, particularly when it occurs over the course of several months. I finally ended up in the ICU with pneumonia. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And my mom knelt by the side of my bed and said, are you ready, sweetie? By the way, we're at the top of page 25. Um, why are you not my English teacher? Because I can barely read. <laughs> I'm trying to get better at reading, which is why I mess up words. Um, Karen, I got my pet turtle. Congratulations. That's dope. Did you get a pet turtle? Turtles are cool. I love you, Brittany. And, okay. And I told her I was ready. And my dad just kept telling me he loved me in this voice that was not breaking so much as already broken. And I kept telling him that I loved him too. I loved him too. And everyone was holding hands and I couldn't catch my breath. And my lungs were acting desperate, gasping, pulling me out of the bed, trying to find a, po a position that could get them air. And I was embarrassed by their desperation, disgusted that they wouldn't just let go. And I remembered my mom telling me it was okay, that I was okay that I would be okay. And my father was trying so hard not to sob that when he did, which was regularly, it was an earthquake. And I remembered not wanting, I remember wanting not to be awake. Everyone figured I was finished, but my cancer doctor Maria managed to get some of the fluid out of my lungs. And shortly thereafter, the antibiotics they'd given me for the pneumonia kicked in. I woke up and soon got, and soon got in, I woke up and soon got into one of those experimental trials that are famous in the Republic of Cancervania for not working. The drug was phalanxor. I don't know how to say that. Phalanxor. Does, does anyone know how to pronounce that? Phalanxor. Yeah, I don't know. Xipor. Phalanxor, maybe? Mm, you're good even though you said thank you. <laughs> um, I love you, Ava. Why'd that dude with him? This is Yosh, and he's helping me pronounce words. He lives with me. And he's taking care of me now that I'm sick. So that's why he's here. And he's the boss. Okay. I woke up and soon got into one of those experimental trials that are famous in the Republic of Cancervania for not working. The drug was phalanic, phalan, phalanixifor. Phalanixifor. I think, I don't know how, but we'll skip it. This molecule designed to attach itself to cancer cells and slow their growth. It didn't work in about 70% of people, but it worked in me. The tumors shrank, and they stayed shrunk. Huzza, huzza, palinex, this well, I don't know why they would put that word in there. I don't even know how to say it. In the past 18 months, my Mets, right? Mm -hmm. My Mets have hardly grown leaving me with lungs that suck at being lungs but could conceivably struggle along indefinitely with the assistance of drizzled oxygen and daily phalanxifor. Admittedly, my cancer miracle had only resulted in a bit of purchase time. I did not yet know the size of the bit, but when, but when telling Augustus Waters, I painted the rosiest possible picture. Embezzle... Em, Embellishing. Embellishing the miraculousness 
embellishing the miraculousness of the miracle. So now you've got to go back to school, he said. I actually can't, I explained, because I already got my GED. So I'm taking classes at MCC, which is our community college. A, co a college girl, he said, nodding. That explains the aura, aura, right? Aura. The aura. That explains the aura of sophistication. He smirked at me. I shoved his upper arm playfully. I could feel the muscle right beneath the skin, all tense and amazing. We made a wheels, we made a wheel screeching turn into a subdivision with eight foot. Oh crap. Hold on guys, the screen went black. Oh. Uh, the book we're on is The Fault in Our Stars and we're on page 26 at the last paragraph. Okay, ready? I love you, Maddie. Can you still see me now a little bit? We jerked to a halt in his driveway. I followed him inside. A wooden plaque in the entryway was engraved in cursive with the words, home is where the heart is. And the entire house turned out to be festooned in such observations. Good friends are hard to find and impossible to forget. Read an illustration above the, read an illustration above the coat rack. True love is born from hard times, promised a needlepoint pillow in their antique furnished living room. Augustus saw me reading. My parents called them encouragements, he, said, he explained. They're everywhere. His mom and dad called him Gus. They were making enchiladas in the kitchen. Ooh, chicken enchiladas are the best. A piece of stained glass by the sink, red and bubbly letters, families forever. His mom was putting chicken in, into tortillas, which his dad then rolled up and placed in a glass pan. They didn't seem too surprised by my arrival, which made sense. The fact that Augustus made me feel special did not necessarily indicate that I was special. Maybe he brought, maybe he brought home a different girl every night to show her movies and fill her up. This is Hazel Grace, he said, by way of introduction. Just Hazel, I said. How's it going, Hazel? asked Gus's dad. He was tall, almost as tall as Gus, and skinny in a way that parentally parentally aged people usually aren't. Okay, I said. How was Isaac's support group? It was incredible, Gus said. You're such a Debbie Downer, his mom said. Hazel, do you enjoy it? I paused a second, trying to figure out if my response should be calibrated to please Augustus or his parents. Most of the people are really nice, I finally said. That's exactly what we found with families at Memorial. 28, page 28. Memorial. When we were in the thick when we were in the thick of it with Gus's treatment, his dad said. Everybody was so kind, strong too. In the darkest days, the Lord puts the best people into your life. Quick, give me a throw pillow and some thread because that needs to be an encouragement, Augustus said. And his dad looked a little annoyed, but then Gus wrapped his long arm around his dad's neck and said, I'm just kidding, Dad. I feel like the freaking, I like the freaking encouragement. I really do. I just can't admit it because I'm a teenager. His dad rolled his eyes. You're joining us for dinner, I hope, asked his mom. She was small and brunette and vaguely mousy. I guess, I said. I have to be home by 10. Also, I don't, um, eat meat. No problem. We'll vegetarianize some, she said. Animals are just too cute, Gus asked. Wait, animals are just too cute, Gus asked. I want to minimize the number of deaths I am responsible for, I said. Gus opened his mouth to respond, but then stopped himself. His mom filled the silence. Well, I think that's wonderful. They talked to me for a bit about how the enchiladas were famous water, were famous waters enchiladas and not to be missed, and about how Gus's curfew was also 10, and how they were inherently distrustful of anyone who gave their kids curfews other than 10. And I was in school. She's a college student, Augustus interjected, and how the weather was truly and absolutely external, and how the weather was truly and absolutely extraordinary for March and how in spring all things are new and they didn't even have to and they didn't even once ask me about the oxygen or my diagnosis which was weird and wonderful and then Augusta said Hazel and I are going to watch B for Vendetta so she can see her filmic doppelganger is that yeah doppelganger 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 A doppelganger is someone who looks like exactly like you oh we are on the top of page 29. I love you, Jenna. Are you guys following? Dope. 
Okay. So she can see her filmic doppelganger. Mid 2000s, Natalie Portman. The living room TV is yours for the watching, his dad said happily. I think we're actually going to watch it in the basement. His dad laughed. Good try, living room. But I wanted to show Hazel Grace the basement, Augusta said. Just Hazel, I said. So show just Hazel the basement, said his dad, and then come upstairs and watch him move in the living room. Augustus puffed out his cheeks, balanced on his legs, and twisted his hips, throwing the prosthetic forward. Fine, he mumbled. I followed him down carpet I followed him down carpet stairs to a huge basement bedroom. A shelf at my eye level reached all the way around the room, and it was stuffed solid with basketball memorabilia. Dozens of trophies with gold plastic men, mid jump shot or dribbling or re reaching for a layup toward an unseen basket. There were also lots of signed balls and sneakers. I used to play basketball, he explained. You must have been pretty good. I wasn't bad, but all the shoes and balls are cancer perks. He walked toward the TV, where a huge pile of where a huge pile of DVDs and video games were arranged in a vague pyramid shape. Been at the way since snapped up V from Vendetta. I was like the pro, the prototypical white, is that right? Hoosier? Hauser? Hoosier. Hoosier. I was a prototypical white, Hauser? Hoosier. Hoosier. Kid, he said. I was all about resurrecting the lost art of the mid range jumper. But then one day I was shooting free throws, just standing at the foul line in, at North Central Gym, shooting from a racket balls. All at once, I couldn't figure out why I was methodically tossing a spherical object through a Toradora Toradal Tori Toro okay. Toroidal maybe Toroidal Toroidal object. It seemed like the stupidest thing I could possibly be doing. I started thinking about the little kids putting a cylindrical cylind cylindrical peg through a circular hole and how they do it over and over again for months when they figure it out and how basketball was basically just a slightly more aerobotic version of the same exercise aerobic. anyway huh aerobic. oh aerobic and how basketball was just a slightly more aerobic version of that same exercise anyway for the longest time I just kept smile I just kept sinking free throws I hit 80 in a row and we played a I think you did hit a basketball game you, we played a like an arcade game, you know, it's arcade basketball games, and I killed it. I got like 400 points, something like that. Yeah. Uh, but as I kept going, I felt more and more like a two year old. And then for some reason, I started to think about my hurdlers. Are you okay? We're at the top of page 31, guys, the Fault in Our Stars. Yes, this is Yosh, he's a boss. He's helping me while I'm sick, and he's helping me pronounce words. But, uh, bye. Rachel, you have to go. Okay, close that. Love you, Jess. Fish sweat, then go away. Great. You guys ready to continue? Cool. I'd taken a seat on the corner of his unmade bed. I wasn't trying to be suggestive or anything. I just got kind of tired when I had to stand a lot. I'd stood in the living room, and then there had been the stairs. And then more standing, which was quite a lot of standing for me, and I didn't want to faint or anything. I was a bit of Victorian. I was a bit of a. I was a bit of a Victorian lady, fainting wise. I'm fine, I said, just listening. Hurdlers? Yeah, hurdlers. I don't know why. I started thinking about them running their hurdle races and jumping over these totally arbitrary objects that had been set in their path, and I wondered if hurdlers ever thought. You know, this would go faster if we just got rid of the hurdles. This was before your diagnosis, I asked? Right. What's up? Yeah. You can bring Matt. Come say hi. Hey. You got your book one? Yeah. Who's that? Oh, snap. What's up, everybody? How you doing? How, how came a reading going? How you doing, buddy? What, what, what book are you reading? Fault in Our Stars. I got up to, like, chapter two, and I kind of forgot about it. Maybe you should join the book club. I know, so yeah, I, I, I actually do like it. So you want to sit next one? Yeah, sure. What chapter are you on? Uh, yeah, I'll do this. 
Okay, so now we're all gonna move. Uh, <laughs> Why don't you get that live stream thing? That huge thing. Uh, not yet. Oh, this is so easy. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Um. Right. Are you reading or not? Oh, I'm reading. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> no, I'm ready. Right. Um. This. We're in the middle of page thirty-one. Uh, this is Matt Espinosa. If you don't know him, and he wants to join the book club. Should we let him? Should we let him join the book club? Should we let him join the book club? Okay. Um, right. This was before your diagnosis, I asked. Right. Well, there was that, too. He smiled with half his mouth. The day of existence fraught for ethos was, coincidentally, also my last days of dual legendness. I had a weekend between when they were scheduled. I had a weekend between when they scheduled the amputation and when it happened. My own little glimpse of what Isaac is going through. I nodded. I like the best of swappers. I really, really, really like him. I like the way his story ended with someone else. I liked his voice. I like that he took existently fraught free throws. I like that he was a tenured. Tenured. I said a tenured. Yeah. I said tenured. Tenured. Tenured professor in the department of slightly crooked smile with a dual appointment in the department of having a voice that made my skin feel more like skin. And I like that he had two names. I'm oh, sorry. Let me just figure out. Oh, sure. I've always liked people with two names because you get to make up your mind with what you call them, Gus or Augustus. Me, I was just like Hazel, unavailant Hazel. Do you have siblings, I asked. Huh, he answered, seeming a little distracted. He said that thing about watching kids play. Oh, yeah, no. I have nephews from my half-sisters, but they're older. They're like, Dad, and how old are Julie and Martha? 28. They're like 28. They live in Chicago. They are both married to fancy lawyer dudes, or banker dudes. I can't remember. You have siblings? I shook my head no. So what's your story, he asked, sitting down next to me at a safe distance. I already told you my story. I was diagnosed when... No, not your cancer story. Your story. Interests, hobbies, passions, weird fetishes, etc. Um, I said, don't tell me you're one of those people who becomes their disease. I know so many people like that. It's disheartening. Like cancer is the growth, like cancer is in the growth business, right? The taking people over business, but surely you haven't let it succeed prematurely. It occurred to me that perhaps I had. I struggled, I struggled with how to pitch myself to Augustus Waters, which enthusiasms to embrace, and in the silence that it followed, it occurred to me that I wasn't very interesting. I am pretty un, I'm pretty unextra, I'm pretty unextraordinary. I rejected that out of hand. I think of some. I rejected that out of hand. Think of something you like. The first thing that comes to mind. Um, reading. What do you read? Everything, from like hideous, hideous romance to pretentious fiction to poetry. Whatever. Do you write poetry too? Ugh. Do you write poetry too? No, I don't write. There, I guess it's almost shattered. Hazel Grace, you are the only teenager in America who prefers reading poetry poetry to writing it. This tells me so much. You read a lot of capital G great books, don't you? I guess. What's your favorite? Um, I said, my favorite book by a wide, my favorite, look, my, my. What's up? <laughs> I think that's it. Take a picture for you. Isn't it hot, Marvin? It's very Is hot. it? It's not that hot. I think it's not that hot. I'm gonna get water really quick. I'll be back in a second. Alright. Here's some shots of the My favorite book by a wide margin was an imperial affliction, but I didn't like to tell people about it. Sometimes you read a book and it fills you with this weird evangelical. Sometimes it fills you. Sometimes you read a book and it fills you with this weird evangelical. Evangelical. Exactly. Evangelical. Uh, sometimes you read a book and it fills you with this evangel evangelical zeal. 
and become convinced that the shattered world will never be put back together unless and until all living humans read the book. And then there are books like An Imperial Affliction, which you can't tell people about. Books so special and rare in yours that advertising books so special and rare and rare and yours that advertising your effect, your affection feels like a betrayal. It wasn't even that the book was so good or anything. It was just that the author Peter Van Houten, Houten seemed to understand me in a weird and impossible way. Understand me in a weird and impossible ways. An imperial affliction was my book. In the way my body was my body and my thoughts were my thoughts. Even so, I told Augustus, my favorite book is probably an imperial affliction. I said, does it feature zombies, he asked. No, I said, stormtroopers? I shook my head. It's not that kind of book, he smiled. I am going to read this terrible book with a boring title that does not contain stormtroopers, he promised, and I immediately felt like I shouldn't have told him about it. Augustus spun around to a stack of books beneath his bedside table. He grabbed the paperback and the pen. As he scribbled an inscription onto the title page, he said, all I ask in, ex all I ask in exchange is that you read this brilliant and haunting novelization of my favorite video game. He held up the book, which was called The Prince of Dawn. I laughed and took it. Our hands kind of got muddled together in that book handoff. And then he was holding my hand. Cold, he said, pressing a finger to my pale wrist. Not, not cold so much as under oxy, under oxygenated. Not so cold as not cold so much as under oxygenated. That's a weird word. Say it. Under oxygenated. Oh, so the same. Thing. I said. I love it when you talk medical to me, he said. He stood and pulled me up with him. I did not let go of my hand until we reached the stairs. We watched the movie with several inches of couch between us. I did the total I did the totally middle school schooly thing wherein I put my hand on the couch about halfway between us to let him know that it was okay to hold it, but he didn't try. An hour into the movie, Augustus's parents came in and served us the enchiladas, which we ate on the couch, and they were pretty delicious. The movie was about this heroic guy in a mask who died heroically for Natalie Portman, who was pretty badass and very hot and does not have anything approaching my puppy steroid face. As the, credits, as the credits rolled, he said, pretty great, huh? Pretty great, I agreed. Although it wasn't really, I was kind of a boy. Although it wasn't really, it was kind of a boy movie. I don't know why boys expect us to like boy movies. We don't expect them to like girl movies. I should get home, class in the morning, I said. I sat on the couch for a while as Augustus searched for his keys. His mom sat down next to me and said, I just love this one, don't you? I guess I, I, guess I had been looking toward the encouragement above the TV. A drawing of an angel with a caption, without pain, how could we know joy? This is an old argument in the field of thinking about suffering, and its stupidity and lack of sophistication could be plumbed for centuries. But suffice it to say that the existence of broccoli does not in any way affect the taste of chocolate. Yes, I said, a lovely thought. I drove Augustus's car home with Augustus riding the shotgun. He played me a couple songs he liked by a band called The Hectic Glow, and they were good songs. But because I didn't know them already, they weren't as good as me. They weren't as good to me as they were to him. I kept glancing over at his leg, or the place where his leg had been, trying to imagine what the fake leg looked like. I didn't want to care about it, but I did a little. He probably cared about my oxygen. Illness repulses. I learned that a long time ago and suspected Augustus had too. As I pulled up outside of my house, Augustus chicken Augustus as a chicken. Augustus clicked the radio off. The air thickened. He was probably thinking about kissing me, and I was definitely thinking about kissing him. Wondering if I had wondering if I wanted to. <laughs> it's so, if weird. I wanted it's to. so weird hearing you say that. Wondering if I wanted to. I'd kiss boys. But it had been a while, pre-miracle. Someone Taylor. I put Guess the car. <laughs> I put the car in park and looked over at him. He really was beautiful. I know boys aren't supposed to be, but he was. Hazel Grace, he said, with my name new and better in his voice. It had been a real pleasure to make your acquaintance. Ditto, Mr. Waters. I said. I felt shy looking at him. I could not match the intensity of his water blue eyes. May I see you again? He asked. There was an endearing nervousness in his voice. I smiled. Sure. Tomorrow, he asked. Patience, grasshopper, I canceled. You don't want to see over England. Right, that's why I said tomorrow, he said. 
I want to see you again tonight when I'm willing to wait all night and much of tomorrow. I rolled my eyes. I'm serious, he said. You don't even know me, I said. I grabbed the book from the central I grabbed the book from the center console. How about I call you when I finish this? But you don't even have my phone number, he said. I strongly suspect you wrote it in the book. He broke out in that goofy smile. And you say we don't know each other. Chapter three. My eyes hurt. You feel better? Kind of. So, chapter three. Oh, shoot. Just give him a little summary. Oh, yeah, I am. Yeah. Hazel was back, and you could have Xbox, and Gusto was back, and yeah. So chapter two, what did you guys think? What did you think? I thought it was okay. Just a couple more things are starting to happen. Yeah, I think next, maybe next two chapters, like things will start to get like really interesting. Right now, it's kind of just like playing on. But that's cool that they they find out they like each other, and they got to hold hands for the first time. Oh, so romantic! I've never held a girl's hand, by the way, guys. Never. Mm, I have. You have? Yeah. A couple. What was it like? It was great. Best day of my life. Really? Yeah. I dreamt about it last night, but I know it'll never happen. Aww. Um, what do you think of it? Do you guys have any questions? Oh, they want you to hold their hand. Hold my hand. Elena, hold his hand. Look at my nose, it's kind of dirty. Ooh, this one's long. My nails are long. Yeah, Reed, I love your voice. Um, what do you think about the book, Cam? I like the book. I, I just want to, I want, I want to like read some more chapters right now, but I don't have time. Uh, do you guys think it would be cool to like read one chapter by yourself, and then when we come back the next week, we'll read the next chapter? So like right now we're on chapter three. So you guys read chapter three by yourself, and then. Next Tuesday, today Tuesday. Next Tuesday, we'll read chapter four. Do you guys like that idea? Is that better? Oh, you're on chapter. No, don't do that. Yes. I haven't seen the movie. I want to see the movie though. Are you gonna? You gonna I mean, I'm not, I'm not just reading this book, guys, so if you're scared that I'm just going like, to finish the book quicker, I'm going to pick another book, something that you guys want me to do. But, um, yeah, I'm going to go on Twitter right now, so tweet hashtag Cam's Book Club, and I'm going to be tweeting you guys back and like asking your opinion on the book so far, what happened in Chapter 2, and stuff like that, oh, what you think I could do better. In Cam's book club, I think I'm gonna be setting up like a, a sign up thing. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, we can read it on our own. Oh, it goes too fast. Let us know your thoughts. I love you, Grace. Yeah, tweet hashtag Cam's book club and like tell me your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Read with passion. Um, yeah, read with passion. It's all about having passion when you read. I know it's read with passion. I mean, I'm sure I'll get like emotional like throughout the book, but right now there's nothing really going on. I don't know. I do read it in like a deadpan kind of way. <laughs> it's getting there. It has to develop. Yeah, I, I'm like for acting classes. I'm like getting. Well, they want me to read more books, so I can learn how to enunciate and properly. Oh, my hand in your face. Enunciate and properly um, pronounce words and stuff like that. I haven't read a book in like forever. But yeah, so I'm working on it. So maybe, hopefully, towards the end of the book, I will be reading with passion. Uh, for my YouTube video, I'm going to be uploading on Thursday because I got food poisoning today and there's like a bunch of things. But I think you guys are really going to like it. It's with Jerome Jar. And I think you guys will really, really. Any questions? Yeah, food poisoning does suck. Oh, so basically the way I got food poisoning, <laughs> we went to the plane, and they loaded us in the plane, and we were about to take off, 
and then all of a sudden the weather like turns for what for the worst and it freaking we're in the we're we're about to, we're like on the runway like waiting to take off and the weather just like turned I don't know why I mean obviously I don't know why it's not mother nature but we ended up sitting in the plane without taking off for three and a half hours and I ordered salmon previously so I think I think that it was it was waiting there for three and a half hours, and then when we took off, it took them forty five minutes to bring me the salmon, and like it was kind of good, it was all right, but like when I think of salmon now, I just want to throw up. But I got, uh, we landed, and like I kept telling Yosha Nash because they were, he was with us in New York, uh, both of them. I was like, dude, my stomach hurts, and on the ride home, I was like, my stomach hurts, my stomach hurts. We got home at like what time? Twelve. Yeah, twelve. We got home at like twelve, and um, they were gonna go out to eat, like go to Crave or something. It's like a diner. Um, yeah, but I was like on the sand because my stomach hurts, so I fell asleep and I woke up and I had like I had to poop really bad. I had like diarrhea, so I ran in the. I have a bathroom room and I ran in there and then uh, like. When I was sleeping previously, like my stomach hurt and like I, I was just having like a horrible time like sleeping, and I felt after, after I went to the bathroom I fell back asleep and I woke up again. This time I had a I had diarrhea again, but I had to throw up too, and I was like, well, you have both like you're throwing up and it's diarrhea, so probably yeah, have food poisoning. Yeah, so I had crappy sleep the whole night and then I woke up. He got me a water bottle, which is cool. Out of that. Um. 6 a.m. Yeah, and then I fell back asleep, woke up again at 8, woke him up, and then we went to CVS to get some, like, um, Gatorades and water and stuff. And so basically we're in the car and we're driving home, back home, and I'm, like, just feeling horrible. And I'm drinking Pedialyte. And I was red when I was drinking it. We get, we park the car and we go to the elevator to go up to our house, and I, like, felt super sick. And, like, I was just, like, kneeling down and I was like, ugh. Like, I didn't want to throw up because I hate throwing up. And I ended up throwing up, like, a gallon of this green liquid, like, out of my mouth and my nose. And it was just, like, explosion. Like, it was just, it really wasn't disgusting. I actually felt, like, relieved. Should have done a video of that. That was, like, cool. Was like, yeah. It was a lot. And then we went up. And I, I was trying to hold it in the elevator. And we went up and I ran to the trash can again. And I just threw up. I know you guys are saying ill, but. People get sick, so that's a common thing to throw up and have diarrhea. The, the don't eat salmon yeah. on planes if it's waiting for four hours. People are saying ew. <laughs> oh. Um. Yeah. So I've actually been in bed all day today, for which sucks because I was on the plane for eight hours doing nothing. Then I come home and I'm here for how long? 16 hours. Yeah, 16 more hours. Like, how crappy is that? So, that's that. I will go on Twitter right now. Thank you, Morgan, for saying feel better. I appreciate it. Um, I love you, Bella. I love you, Raven. I love you, Samantha. I love you, Natalie. And oh, I love all of you guys, but I'm going to go on Twitter. Here's a kiss to make you feel better. Daniela. Ooh. Ooh. Yep. So go on Twitter, uh, do the hashtag Cam's Book Club, and I'm going to be answering you guys there. All right. Bye, guys. Love you. Say peace, Yosh. Later, guys. Keep re read chapter three. Yeah, read chapter three. Read chapter three. Read chapter three, and then we'll read chapter four together next Tuesday. And I'm still going to call people tomorrow for now. All right. Bye, guys. Love you.